sup guys welcome back um, so today we're going to be doing the um, or starting the inventory system for our game so just a little recap in the last videos we set up uh, basically the sprint system with the stamina and the ads um, and it's working uh, everything for with replication so in this video i'm going to be working on um, starting working on on the the actual actors that are going to be the items that we're going to find in the world and maybe start doing the um, some of the details of each item like the name the type and stuff like that so i'm not going to get into the widget today uh, like the actual menu uh, or inventory screen i'm going to work on the actual you know data side of things so i'm going to go into the blueprints and i'm going to right click create a new folder i'm going to create uh, call it items and I'm going to create a new blueprint class of an actor and I'm going to call this master item so uh, every item on our inventory is going to drive from this master item <coughs> excuse me and um, just make sure this is replicated uh, we want that replicated and I'm going to delete this default scene root actually I'm not and uh, I'm just going to add a static mesh uh, component and this is going to be our item mesh so this is going to be whatever we want our item to be and uh, now we got to create um, uh, okay I should talk about this first so I want like items that you can find in the world alone and I'm gonna want to find uh, chests like in stalker where you have like little chests where you find items inside and you can like um, you know drag them into your inventory so I'm also going to create or rather I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to call this uh, master chest and this is going to be uh, something where I'm going to find items inside and I'm just going to change the static mesh over here and just call it the chest mesh and I'm just going to add a cube and I'm going to make it uh, let me drag this up like that and I'm just going to just scale it a little bit like that and like that so that can be our chest there you go so I'm going to compile and save another thing that we need to add into our master item is going to be a collision so a box collision and I'm going to make that a root so our item is going to be in the middle actually I don't want to be the box um, as the root because it's going to be like uh, overlapping with the floor so I'm actually going to control Z this and I'm going to leave the box just as a tab attached to the default scene root so I can actually now move the box up there you go and I'm gonna want this box to be called uh, overlap collision so we're gonna want this collision to be overlapping all and this is basically going to overlap with the player and if the player is overlapping with this he will be able to pick up the item so I'm going to make this uh, I'm gonna leave it default because we can override this on the child blueprints that I'm gonna do in a minute and I'm going to do that for the master chest as well so I'm going to add the box collision and I'm going to make I want to attach this there you go and now the box I'm going to drag it up make the mesh on the floor as well a little bit up let me just change the snapping over here to 5 there you go now I'm just going to make the collision I'm gonna put it I'm going to um, actually I'm gonna want just the box to be a child because I want to move the collision independent of the box so the order of this doesn't really matter it's just uh, you know the visual over here so I want the collision to be a little bit forward of the box so I can come in and overlap with it so I'm going to compile and save this and now we are actually going to start working on 
um, the data for the item. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add a new blueprint structure and I'm going to call it S underscore item details and over here is going to be all the details of the item that we want. So first of all it's going to be the name I'm going to make this a string there's going to be a description there's going to be a string there's going to be a thumbnail or it's going to be the, the image on our inventory I'm going to make this a texture 2D uh, we're also going to need to create another blueprint but this time an enumeration so E underscore item type so we're going to need to, let's go back into our item details we need to have a variable that controls what type of item it is so let's make this of the type uh, of the item that we just did so that's going to be item type and let's just quickly add something in there let's add a new, this is going to be uh, miscellaneous so it can be stuff um, that is like something that doesn't get used when you use them like a consumable so it's something that you can just you know read like a note or something that you can uh, like use but leave on the inventory uh, like a note or something like that here is going to be the consumables those are the things that you can only use once uh, consumables this is going to be the weapons so it's some uh, stuff that you can equip and then I'm going to add some subclasses to the weapon so it's going to be semi-auto uh, it's going to be weapon pump action pump or bolt action this is going to be for um, um, for snipers and shotguns and now the full auto for uh, automatic weapons we need to uh, distinguish these ones on items because uh, this is going to drive which code are we going to do if it's going to be called for semi-fire or called for full auto or whatever so we need to have these types over here and now we can just leave this and uh, you know just add on more types or more details as we need to go but let's go ahead and add as well um, so the class this is just going to be of the type master item and it's going to be the class reference this is just going to be something that we can set um, so later on if for example if you drop the item from the inventory you can spawn another one of it so we're just going to set this class to ourselves so later on we can access um, this master item now I don't believe uh, I'm missing something so also we're going to need to have the animations or I'm gonna call it the animation blend space that's the, the blend space that we did before and this is going to be of the type blend space uh, 1D I believe it's like that, there you go so as I said in the video where we did animation this is going to drive which animation we are playing on the state machine and I'm not sure if we need anything else, yes we do we need a boolean that is going to say if it's stackable so uh, can stack because there are, uh, there are going to be items that we're going to be able to stack on the item slots and others don't like the weapons so that's another thing yeah and I believe that's gonna be it We're also going to need more information like damage and ammunition and stuff. That's going to be uh, for some subclasses of the master item. So right now I just want the basic item stuff. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave that here. So we're going to go into the master item and we're going to add a variable which is going to be the details. 
and we're gonna make it of the type of the struct underscore item details oh yeah I also forgot something we need to tell uh, which is the mesh so the item mesh this is going to be a static mesh reference because later on we're going to store this so for example when we want to equip the weapon we're going to get the weapon mesh from over here so we need to have this all inside the item detail struct so we can compile and save now we have all this data that we can set but uh, how we're going to set this is going to be I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call this just uh, sub items and I'm going to create a child blueprint of the master item which I'm going to call test item and I'm going to move that there so now when we open this up you get uh, these things that we created in the master so I'm going to set item mesh for the test I'm going to do uh, what can I do I'm just going to do a generic HMD so that's going to be fine make sure you drag this into the floor I'm going to actu actually put this on the left view so I, I can actually drag this down into the ground I'm going to make the snapping one there you go I actually want to eye this but I'm not sure I can do that yeah I don't think I can hide this little ball okay it doesn't matter so I'm just going to drag down the collision and I actually let me go into the master item because uh, I need to swap this around otherwise I can't move the collision as I want to so let's make this like that there you go so let's go back into the test item and now I can drag this where I want it to drag it over into the middle now you can pick the collision and drive it as you want to as well so I'm probably going to want to make this a little bit bigger like that now let's drag our test item into the ground uh, so if you actually play you can already see it but you cannot interact with it So for us to interact, I'm actually going to create a widget. So let me just close the stuff that I don't need right now. The chest as well. I don't need that right now. Uh, I'm going to go into data, widgets, and I'm going to create another widget. I'm going to call it WB underscore um, item icon. So this is going to be, uh, when you're close to an item, we're going to display a 3D icon on the screen. And this icon is going to be pretty simple it's just going to be I guess we can make a text make it put it in the middle over here it's just, it's just, it's just going to be a point that's going to be in the middle of the screen and I'm actually going to make this uh, of the font light so it is actually a little ball over here Yeah, that's good enough now I think I need to make this a little bit bigger like 64 there you go yeah so I'm going to compound save and I'm gonna go into the master item I'm going to add a component which is going to be a widget and the widget class is going to be the item icon and I'm going to make this a screen so now if you play you can see that you have that little point over there you just need to move it a little bit upwards uh, but we need to do that on the test item so you drag the widget put this a little bit on top and it should be fine right now there you go so now you can see that you have that little widget or screen widget over there and you can see that you can see it through walls and everything but we don't want to be seeing this over large distances uh, we want this to be hiding from us at a distance so let's go back into our widget 
and we can actually uh, just go into the graph and we can use the event tick over here so let's get the owning player we're going to get distance to the, the other actor uh, I guess we're going to need to create a new variable and call it the owning item make this of the type master item And we're going to get uh, this into the other actor and if this return value is uh, smaller I guess then let's say 3 meters 300 centimeters we are going to set the visibility of this widget to visible if this is false we're going to set it to even And now let's go into our master item on event begin play let's grab the widget let's get the user widget object let's cast to you the item icon and now we're going to set the variable that we created so set the owning item we're going to set this to be ourselves so the master item and you don't need to call this on the server because the event begin play uh, over a replica widget is already on the on the server so you can just put the code like that it's going to be fine let me just delete this and if everything is well we should have this working so if we approach uh, if we approach is not working why is that let's go over here into the widget let's go ahead and print a string string to from these two and let's see what is the distance let's play well that's interesting um, Hmm. Uh, instead of hiding let me just try and go over into the text make it a variable I'm going to get that if it's true I'm going to set the text to a point if it's false I'm going to set the text to nothing By the way, instead of using a point, you can also do this with an image or a custom icon if you want to. I'm just doing a point because I just want a little point to be on the screen. So you can see a bunch of numbers are appearing, uh, but they are not really ticking or they are not changing, which I don't really know why. We are doing this from the event tick. So it should be ticking. Uh, do we need to get the owning player? Let's get the owning local player. That might be what we need. There's a local player object reference. We can cast it. Okay, that's weird. okay let's get our owning player so we get the player controller let's get the controlled pawn that might be working i'm not sure there you go now you can see that the server over there is moving as we get close the little point appears and you can see that it is not appearing on the other people's screen so that's great so let's try and do this with a client why is it flickering? Okay. Yeah, I think I was supposed to uh, fix that bug. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I said in the last video that I would fix that. And that happens when you are walking forward, uh, when you're walking backwards or sideways. 
so okay for some reason it's fixed now okay it might just have been a bug I, I don't remember I made the other tutorial um, the other day so I don't remember uh, I gotta check what I said but it's not bugging anymore I think yeah now it's not bugging okay okay sorry about that so yeah so you can see that the replication of the little uh, widget is working correctly so I can actually delete uh, this print string there you go let's compile and save I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger so 128 then I'm gonna put this over in the middle not sure if that's too big see no that's fine there you go so if I go full screen you see that's a point that appears uh, okay for some reason it starts uh, okay I think I figured it out that bug is starting but if I'm down the sides and I leave it it fixed it uh, it's fixed like it fixes itself so I need to see what is wrong it's something over here on the set is ADS it's probably the orient rotation to movement or use control rotation yaw so yeah I'm using control rotation yaw it's default true but when I leave ADS over here it's false so let me uncheck that because I do not want that there you go so it's fixed okay sorry about that I probably uh, should have fixed that in the other video but that's it okay so I think I'm gonna leave this video here so we have set up our uh, items now uh, actually before I do that before I leave the video I'm going to do one last thing I'm just going to be able to pick up the item so I'm going to create over here in the master human I'm gonna create a custom event called client underscore pick item and I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call that um, let me see available item or pickable item there you go so I'm gonna make this of the type master item you do not need to make this replicated because I'm gonna do the pickup stuff on the client side so you do not need to replicate pickable item you can leave it uh, as not replicated so if this is valid uh, when we call this we are going to uh, create another variable which we're going to call the inventory and we're going to make this of the type s underscore item details and we need to make this an array and this is going to be replicated uh, actually we do not need to this to be replicated actually we do because if we kill a player or and then check its corpse we're gonna want to see it, their inventory so yeah you need to make this replicated and let's get the inventory and then we're going to add but I'm actually going to create a custom event uh, which I'm going to say server underscore add item to env and now we're going to do that I'm going to create I'm actually not going to drag from the inventory over here I'm going to create a, a new parameter which I'm going to call the inventory and I'm going to make it of the type item details make that an array I'm going to create another parameter which I'm going to call the item then I want to add this is going to be of the type master item and I do not want it to be an array so I'm going to drag from inventory and say have and then what I want to add I'm going to drag from the item I'm going to get the details and I'm going to add that up so this is going to be added uh, on the server side and then I'm not I'm going to call this from days valid so server add item to env the inventory I'm going to drag it from over here and the item is going to be uh, the pickable item 
So this is going to be our logic to, uh, to pick up the item. And right now I'm going to just destroy the item. So I'm going to drag from the item and I'm going to say destroy actor. Because after you pick it up you want it to be destroyed from the world. And now you need to set up on the player controller a key to call this client pick item. So I'm going to make that key F. So I'm going to say F from the keyboard. And I'm going to get the control pawn. Then I'm going to cast to my master human. Then I'm going to say client pick item. And then this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Let me just comment this. Pick item if valid. Later on, uh, we are going to add a check to see if we have enough uh, space on our inventory. Uh, but that's going to be later on. I'm not going to add that today because I haven't set up any weight stuff yet. So we're just doing this to see if it works. So let's go over the item. And if we press F, uh, actually it's not going to work because we need to do one last thing. Let's go into the master item. Let's go over here, click on the overlap collision. And let's go and add a plus on the event begin overlap and another plus on the end overlap. The other actor, let's cast the human, master human. And then we're going to set uh, the pickable item. We're going to set it to self. And if we leave the area or the collision, we are going to set it to nothing. So now that should work. Let's play. Let's see if it works as the server. So I'm in the collision. I press F. The item disappears. It disappears on the clients as well. So now if I play again and try to do that with the client. And press F. That hides. And it hides on the client. And on the server. So that's it. That's the logic. So in the next video I'm going to be starting the widget. Uh, let me just comment this. In the next video I'm going to be starting the widget and showing on the screen the items that we pick up. And I'm probably going to work on, on the layout of the inventory. It's going to be, I'm going to try and do it as close as I can to Stalker because I really like the, the inventory layout on those games. And I want to kind of bring that here. So yeah, that's going to be our next video. It's probably going to be a little bit boring because it's just going to be setting up the widget. But we're going to get some to some cool stuff when we start adding the slots from our inventory and the logic to, you know, add them um, in the line. And, you know, and then probably we're going to work on the logic of the weight. So we're only going to be able to pick up an item if we have enough free space on our uh, backpack. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye.